A real challenge has presented itself in 2020, trying to stay employed. Many businesses have laid off their employees or cut their salaries. Considering the US consumer is everything to the US economy, and with the average US consumer living paycheck to paycheck, this is absolutely not a good combination. Can printing money and buying debt really fix the issue? You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to look at what's going on with the jobs. I want to talk about the economy. I want to look at what's happening with the markets. And of course, connect that in with what really matters to you. Let's begin. U.S. private payrolls dropped by 20 million in April, the worst job loss in the history of the ADP report. I want to know what's going to happen with the numbers when we get them from the BLS. Of course, we are seeing every single week the numbers just continue to climb. But as long as they stay within their estimates, then everything's going to be just fine. Check this out. They're not as bad as the expectation of 22 million job losses. And so the markets can feel oh so happy about that. The biggest losses came in the services and hospitality along with trade, transportation and utilities as well as construction. Look, I'm going to show you statistics today, indicators today that are very similar to others that we have seen in the past. I like to track and trace this every week, every month, every quarter, every year, depending on what the stat is, but we're going to see the same patterns, okay? Essentially, we saw the economy begin to fall from 2018 up until 2020 and as soon as we got to 2020 it simply fell off a cliff we can look at what's happening in the shipping industry and the auto industry and economic growth and manufacturing and you just continue go down the list it basically looks like this that same pattern exists they always want to focus on this because they can say well it's just temporary we'll get back to normal soon but they never want to focus on the fact that Things were already on a downward trajectory. Now, it might be hard to see on this chart here provided by ADP, but I just wanted to give you a real look at the magnitude of what we are witnessing. So right at the top here, this line, that's just showing us historically from 2003 up until 2020. Behind that purple line is a gray line showing you the ADP National Employment Report. It might be difficult to actually see, but on the right hand side here, that's not the border of this graph. That is the actual number it's trying to show you of 20 million jobs lost. It's unbelievable. You could miss it if you weren't looking closely, but it's there. As you can see, there's this little dip downward. I don't know if you could see these numbers here, but this is the financial crisis. It looks like a small change, just a small blip compared to the numbers we're seeing right now. That's the financial crisis. That's that time that we've been referring to for over a decade. And while while you were seeing job losses coming month after month, it never looked like this. We haven't seen this kind of activity before, and that goes for so many different stats. Here you can see the April 2020 ADP employment report, 20 million jobs down. It shows you the small business report, 6 million jobs. If you click on one of these, it will take you in and you can get a closer look at them. This is just some of the numbers here. I'm not going to go into all the detail. You can go to adpemploymentreport.com and go through there, or there will be a link in the description as always under the sources. New York City may lose 900,000 jobs and that the workers in hotels and restaurants and retail will be the hardest hit. That's generally accepted. We know that this is the case. Certain areas around the United States or if you look around the world are obviously going to be impacted more by this than others, but it's certainly affecting people in general. In yesterday's video, I talked about the UCOV rate and essentially what we're looking at is a different way to calculate unemployment not everybody's going to feel it the same in one respect you can completely get laid off in another you can have your salary cut some people are completely booted out never to return and so many different things that could be really wreaking havoc if you wanted full-time hours now you can only get part-time hours i mean there's so many different ways the ucov rate that i 
discussed in the previous video, or I think it was two videos ago. I think it's an interesting way to look at all of this. And of course, 34% is the expectation on that. This just shows you how bad things have become. This is the breakdown of the job losses by sector. I pulled this from CNBC, but they're getting it from the comptroller. Accommodation and food services, retail and so on are all listed here. You could check that out if you're interested. This was an interesting article out of Bloomberg. I wanted to talk about it quickly here. There's a lot to it and you should definitely read it if you have the time. Plenty of the layoffs that just a month ago were labeled temporary are now tagged indefinite or permanent. And I had seen so many people tell me this is all temporary. This is all temporary. Why are you doing this? Why are you talking about this? And yet we are seeing this happening everywhere all over the world alongside announcements of sweeping staff cuts by major employers such as Boeing. U.S. Steel, you got the downsizing of brick and mortar retailing, Uber's on here, Airbnb is on here, Alcoa, massive company. And if you go down the page, there, there's more in here. Lots of different industries right now. So while we could look at this and say, well, you know, it's only 1,900 people or maybe 3,700 people, and you look at this other company, it's 5,000 or 20, doesn't matter. You have to look at this on all levels. Yes, that affects these people, but those individuals who might have some money saved up, maybe they'll be okay for a few months, but how long until a company like theirs or maybe the same company and maybe it's in their industry, maybe it's a different industry, are gonna hire that person? How are they gonna get back to a bit of normalcy? It might take a long time. Look at the financial crisis where the bottom 50% of people in the United States and in general, you look at that really all over the world, they are no better today than they were during the financial crisis. This was the article connected with that Uber to lay off 3,700 employees. That's about 14% of the workforce. So even those who are going towards the gig economy, they're hurting really bad now because not as many people are going to hop into an Uber. As a result of all that, the revenues are down at the company, just like the same situation with Airbnb. I talked about that in a previous video. This is a paradigm shift that's happening today. You know, a lot of people say that nothing can disrupt this. This is the future. This is what's happening in a really, you know, any of these companies we're looking at today that have done really, really well. Nobody understands the effect of the black swan. And a little bit of humor, small business loans are not going proportionately to the hardest hit areas, according to the Fed. There are details here, but this PPP program is ultimately a joke. It was rolled out so terribly, they looked at all of the information so far, a billion dollars of it going to big companies, and they said, we're going to take the money, but as soon as it runs out, we're going to lay people off. That's the way it goes. And they didn't do this the banks that were in between who by the way made 10 billion dollars in a matter of days basically they didn't do the first come first serve basis like it was supposed to be no 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 they took the biggest ones first because that meant the most commission for the least amount of effort Law firms gear up for expected jump in bankruptcies. This is important because when you look at this, the average individual, yes, they're obviously taking a hit. But the corporations, they're taking a hit too. Many of them are going to have to get rid of people permanently. All of this means that those who work in this field are going to be very busy. We're going to look at a lot of statistics. They're going to be climbing. And just like your seven shares of Amazon, they could be going to the moon. In this case here though, not a good thing. This article is talking most specifically about Texas and essentially saying that what's happening here with the current situation that we're aware of as well as oil has really pounded Texas from both sides. I could see 50 to 80 percent of independent oil companies disappearing. We're healthy. My family's healthy. We got a good life. I'm okay but I'm worried about my children and grandchildren. It's pretty devastating. Many families are going to be hit very hard by this. Many small business businesses are not going to be able to survive this. With people living paycheck to paycheck, I just don't understand how they are going to pay their bills. Maybe in the short term, they'll be taken care of. Longer term, it's not looking good. 
But the US government has an idea, and that is Treasury launches the 20 year bond to help fund the record borrowing. This is what they do. They've got to bring in more money. With the national debt just shy of $25 trillion, they need to go into a deficit. They need to start the public works projects. They need to get people moving. And all of that needs more funding, okay? They need more income which is obviously very difficult to do at this time because everything's at a standstill, but so much of that heads back outward. So it's really difficult to balance all of this. I understand, but I'm just not sure how we're going to have any buyers for the amount of debt that they're trying to issue at this first auction. They're going to go way, way beyond this. As the deficit gets worse and worse, what do you think they're going to need to do? You're going to need to expand that further and further. There are a lot of buyers, but ultimately the Fed will be the buyer of last resort. This is extremely important here. I talked about Jeffrey Gundlach and what he said about the corporate credit facility of the Federal Reserve. They hadn't been purchasing any of that, yet they made it seem as if they were. So the market started to get a little bit worried about it. Check this one out here. Bank of America analysts issuing their own prayer to the Fed, writing that a lot of investors, including non-credit ones, have bought investment-grade corporate bonds the past two months on the expectation that they can sell to you. So it would be helpful if you soon began buying broadly and in size. Isn't it funny that the big banks are saying, hey, Papa Fed, you promised you were going to do this. We bought on that promise. I hope you're going to follow through. And so what are people doing? Well, they're trying to invest. They see the dip and they're trying to buy it. Thanks to zero fees, easy access afforded by the internet, and unexpected glut of free time on their hands, millennials and Gen Z are opening online brokerage accounts at a record pace. And we're talking about the beginner of beginner type investors here because at the bottom, it tells you that they're going through their videos on their different platforms, looking for things like, how do I buy a stock? So these people have no experience, they have no knowledge around this, and they're going to be putting their money in right now. In fact, they already have been. We'll see if that was the right thing to do. Even Jim Cramer is freaking out about what's happening right now. Jim Cramer on Wall Street trading trends. This action makes little sense. When we get Friday's employment report, it's going to be so bad. We're going to be debating whether we're in a serious recession or a depression. That's how bad this is going to be. And yet you look at the market, it doesn't reflect that at all. I understand that there is a divergence in between the two, but that always reverts to the mean. It's extremely important to acknowledge that. Investor fear of missing out is, quote, not a good sign for markets, warns Morgan Stanley. Essentially saying that investors need to always be hedging their bets, need to be concerned about any potential volatility and not simply go pedal to the metal. And of course, that's always a good thing. It doesn't have to be in the middle of a crisis. You always want to be prepared. And this article right here is essentially just talking about the fact that the auto industry is getting destroyed right now and they want to bail out. So we'll see what happens this time around. I'm sure more money will be flowing towards these corporations, trying to maintain the jobs there, trying to keep everyone spending, trying to keep them working, whatever it takes. That's all for this video. If you found that informative, hit that thumbs up button. When you do, you're supporting me. I want to thank you for that. If you want to check me out on Instagram and Twitter, I'm creating content for those every single day. Definitely check me out at The Money GPS. If you want to understand e-commerce, but you don't want to pay $1,000 plus for one of those courses, I've created a free e-course for my subscribers to learn. Check it out, theamazongps.com. The financial system is confusing, it's convoluted, and the explanations I have seen about the ranging topics within it are just horrible. In these two books, I explain things so easily anybody could understand it. Check them out at the link in the description if you want the audiobook instead, themoneygps.com. Wait a second, don't go anywhere. This is an extremely important video. Have you seen it yet? If not, definitely click on it. I'll see you there.